This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I am your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello. How are you going? Uh, I go. You go? And then I come back, and then I go again. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about like it sounds like about me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Howdy, folks. So, I uh, hope everybody has been uh, enjoying the last two weeks Specifically, the old Star Wars pinball VR that has come out. We are indeed mm. going to be talking about that today. Um, yes. But we got uh, we got some other things we're going to uh, just kind of meander about in prior to that. The first one being, Jared, I did a thing. Well, what thing did you do? I cut a cord. Oh, you did? Oh, I, are I, you talking I, about cable? I finally cut the cord. I'm joining the modern era here. Um, oh wow! I have okay. uh, I've been a Dish Network subscriber for 19 years. Wow. Okay. Mm. And uh, they decided to raise the price on me and not honor what they had previously said that they would do, which was well. keep my price going the same. And uh, so I was like, well, if you're going to be that way, I guess I'm going to have to look for alternatives. So in the mm. meantime, I found alternatives and realized, hey, this whole streaming thing and cutting the cord, it's not as expensive as I thought. It's actually cheaper. <laughs> oh, really? Because um, a lot of people say it's not, depending on what services you go for. It depends on, well, here's the thing. It depends on what you actually watch. And that was yeah. where the key factor came in. I started doing a hard look at what it is that I actually watch, how many channels I actually watch. And realized, um, I don't watch that many channels anymore. All my viewing is kind of on Netflix these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, it's like, whenever I hear it, it's like, it's always Netflix or Disney Plus. They're the two that people flip between. Well, I mean, here's the thing with Disney Plus. Disney Plus is if you are just want movies or their custom shows, right? Mm. Same thing with Netflix, although Netflix has a bazillion TV shows. And they're pulling they also shows from networks. Uh, in oh, uh, from think, around so the they're world. essentially syndicating him on on Netflix, more or less. Yeah, uh, mm. so using an old TV <laughs> analogy, right? Uh, <laughs> as for the like my local stations, uh, so for us in the states, that's your ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, the, mm. the big four. I don't watch any of their programs. And that's kind of a big factor for cable. Also, I don't watch any of the news networks. I don't tend to watch live sports. Those are all the factors that when you want to have while cutting the cord, that's what jacks the price up. So oh, okay. instead, I'm going to be perfectly fine with things that, like if I buy a Hulu basic package, well, the shows are going to be on the air the next day. I'm fine mm. waiting. That's what I currently do anyway. You know, if I'm if there's anything I'm going to watch, it tends to be the following day that I watch it. Mm. And uh, this will actually allow me to have the money to buy into HBO Max and Disney Plus. And hey, if I need, you know, Amazon Prime, I can pay into that also. And it'll all come down in price. So yeah, today yeah. I literally called them up and said, that's it. Here's my final day. Uh, See you later. When, when the billing period is, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, no, 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 we can we can do the price that you had been paying. Too late, guys. <laughs> yes, sorry. No, because I gave you a chance. And oh, you didn't not only do did it I again. give them a chance, I talked to three different people on that same day, and I was heavily saying, well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to find alternative things. And they just went, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, <laughs> no worries, mate. So okay, clearly, well, okay then. Clearly, the right person wasn't talking to me on that day, but, you know. Well, the three right, right. people <laughs> were talking to you on that day, yeah. Too bad for you. Oh, well. Um, See you later, Dish. Okay, other thing that uh, we heard uh, this past week. Hey, it turns out Stern is making a Mandalorian pinball table. Who <laughs> would have It's like, okay, this is interesting. This is going to be and really interesting. Yeah, so we're going to find yeah. out real quick who the better designer is. What's going on? <laughs> who... Exactly. Yeah. Because we've kind of I'm had not a sure small... who the designer is on this. I don't either, but we kind of have a small taste of it in terms of there's a Deadpool table in Zen, and mm. then there's Stern's yeah. Deadpool. Um, we have yeah. 
obviously 19, well, 21 now, 21 versions of Star Wars that Zen has done, and then the mm-hmm. one version of Star Wars that uh, Stern has done. But this is the first time mm-hmm. we're going to get like a one-to-one relatively close. Like they were like being developed. one-to-one the... theme. One-to-one like, the, theme, the thing and is they were about... being developed at the same yeah. time, which means there's not going to be the ability to copy what the other guy was doing. No, that like this. That, there's no way that I mean, pinball design goes back months. So right. there's no way that either of them could have known that this was in the works. Like, and given that it's Mandalorian and Disney, there's no way uh, there, there was rumors floating around that this was a thing, but there was no leaks <laughs> at all of it. And we know through <laughs> welcome Zim, to Lucasfilm. You know, <laughs> welcome to Lucasfilm. Exactly right. Like they don't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it should be interesting yeah. because you got to um, figure Lucasfilm is giving Stern the same access, I would imagine, that they've been giving Zen. Yeah. Which, you know, it's. Uh, and you know, it's Lucasfilm. It's going to be interesting for the rumor mill. Right. And you know, Lucasfilm <laughs> had to approve all the artwork and uh-huh. everything that's going to be on the table. So I'm, I'm dying to know what this thing looks like. Um, as, yep. you, as you commented to me. Let's hope it's not Led Zeppelin. <laughs> oh, oh man, that was a that was that table was phoned in real hard. Like, <laughs> I don't see any innovation on that at all. Like, you look at Led Zeppelin, um, and you just go, meh. And then you look at something like you know Avengers Infinity Quest, and you go, oh, okay, now there's an innovative table. Um, the, the one that Stern's released. Yeah. Uh, like, the Netherworld's got it. We've been playing it heaps. It's a great table. Like, you put the, the ironic thing is like Turtles and Infinity Quest. They're around the same time. And okay. the table's like chalk and cheese. Like, Turtles is just hot garbage. <laughs> no, I'm, it, it really is hot garbage. And Infinity Quest That's is like. That's the phrase that pays today, folks. Just it so sure know. is. It's the hot garbage. Yeah, so it is hot garbage. I hate having to play it in tournaments. It's like my least favorite game on the floor. Wow. And there's some other, there's like things like The Walking Dead on the floor, which I'm not really hot on either. But man, Turtles is just, it's hot garbage. I hate it. Wow. But you, you think about the same time, they have this Infinity Quest game are, are releasing around the same time as well. And it's like, it's like night and day. Like, uh, so. I'm going to be really interesting. I hope they haven't got the the TMNT designer to do this table. I hope they've got the Infinity Quest designer to do the table, because if they have, there's real promise in this title. It could be pretty amazing. I, I want them to use like go all in on this and use the same sort of technology that they used in Stranger Things and you know that projection system and all the other stuff and just throw the whole kit and caboodle at this thing. Because yeah. if they do, it's going to be an amazing experience. Uh, other areas that uh, we want to uh, it brought up something I'm, I I don't have the video of it did you see th- in the real pinball world there's apparently a lot of uh, fuss over the sheer balls that Stern has charging what they're charging for their pinball toppers considering they're basically mm. just plexiglass and colored lights <laughs> that they're they're not anything amazing, but mm. there was a somebody made a toy, um, and it's literally a toy of the Stargate uh, disc, right? Yep. Combination disc. It's all motorized, makes all these awesome sounds, and a lot of people are going, "I think we can adapt that." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> to to a pinball machine, and the beautiful thing, the thing that does amazing. Oh yeah. So. The Star Day Scar- <laughs> Try it again. The Stargate Ring, right? For those mm-hmm. that have not seen the TV show or the movie a long time ago, it was, you know, this ancient Egyptian like design when the combination dialed in, all of a sudden a portal opened up to transfer inside into it. another world. Well like a big pool yeah. inside the ring. So when and and the ring is vertical. So on this toy, it's got a mirror on the front of it, right? Mm-hmm. When all the combination locks Align, bam, infinity lights appear, oh. making it look like the thing has depth. And I just went, oh, oh that's beautiful. Oh, that is geez. beautiful. I, I just have that. I had that sitting on the shelf just doing its thing. Right, right. Like, 
and, and the thing is, <laughs> is incredible. I think what they were saying for the price, it's about what Stern is charging for their pinball toppers. And so people are like, come on, if somebody can produce that <laughs> for that price. Yeah. You know, anyway. That's, uh, oh, I see it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you, you, right. You, you're seeing it? Oh, man, I wish I could have you share my screen. Hold on. Oh. Uh, where, where did you look that up, Jared? I'm going to look that up real quick and share it with everybody. Uh, I think it's, is it the Hackaday thing? Uh, probably. So let's see. Start let me have a look eight. here. Oh, yeah. Let me let me send you this link quick. We'll Pinball just do it live. Do it live. Gonna, do it we're now. We're going to do it live? All right. We're going to do it live. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, man. Uh, in your messenger now is the link that I think you're looking for. <laughs> this is the link you are looking for. Jeez, oh, that looks good. If this is the one you're talking about. Let's see here. La -da -de -de. As my computer tries to load up, because I didn't have Messenger up. Oh, yep, this is it. I can mm -hmm. tell already. All right, folks. Let's, uh, let me uh, give a little screen share here. Ta -da! Look at that thing. Oh, so geez, you, push the, you push this button, and then all these, you push this little button here, and then on these lights. The chevrons light to, up. They, well, they light up one at a time as this inner ring actually spins, oh, and it hits the things, and then the locks engage. They go chink. They like will slip down. They actually and, slip down? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, they actually move, and they make all these nice, loud noises. Uh, oh, and then... It Once was a real spectacle uh, in the show to see yeah. this thing engaged. Oh, wait a second. In the look, what we can, look what we can do. What can look we do? What we can do. Let's do this. Let's just enjoy, although this is probably good. I'm going to leave it on mute because I don't know if yeah. this music is uh, <laughs> licensed music uh, or you, not. It probably would be. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that was, that was generic enough. I don't think we'll get to tag. But so, see, you can see that the locks aren't engaged right there. No. At the yeah. moment. Right? And it is that you can see the mirror when you see yep. it up close, hey, but you wouldn't even know, like looking at it, that it was there. It's no. so seamless. No. Wow. So that's just a nice little bit of modeling right there. Yeah, that the, the actual, like, on. if that was just a static display, that would look great on the top of a pinball right. machine, right? right? Yeah. So then it's just a wow. question of when they Even fire the, this thing like, up. the stonework and everything is yeah, like, the stone, it's the not... painting on it. Um, I mean, this is, that's, all, right. that's all good stuff right there. That is incredible. Yeah. Wow. And oh, there's there it is lit up. This one apparently isn't showing us how the uh, the gates work. Oh, here we go. How the gates work. There it is. Oh, <laughs> look at that. All right. So you actually look select the ship and they encode. Look at Wow. Hey, look at it. That's so awesome. And each of the individual chevrons are here. Almost one more. One more. Look at that. That's just magic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. How much, how much are they charging for that? Because I want one. <laughs> You're like, I don't even care that if I don't have a pinball machine to put it on. I, I, I'll, find, I'll find something <laughs> to put it on. I don't, I don't necessarily need anything to put that on, like apart from my desk, because I'll just play with for hours. It's amazing. <laughs> Want it? What need? Wants and needs, right? Oh, yeah. exactly, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, one more bit before we get into our uh, Star Wars pinball VR review, and that is, as you know, throughout uh, guy for some time now, um, we've been in communication with Arcuda. Yeah. Arcuda keeps on mentioning product. And then delaying, and then mentioning product, and then delaying, and mm. never having anything out. And they were mm. supposed to have an announcement at the beginning of April, and then there was then they flooding. got flooded out, <laughs> and then they got flooded out in Australia. Because yeah. Of, of um, so finally, finally, there has been a suddenly a stream of tweets, Jared. A flurry a of flurry activity. A flurry of activity on the old mm. Twitter. So if you have not followed Arcuda and you are interested in a gaming cabinet. Now might be the time to go ahead and, uh, you know, mm. subscribe to their Twitter feed. But I want to kind of point out, um, they're kind of giving their history, uh, where they came from. and Their pedigree, you know, essentially. Yeah, because they basically said they've been in the gaming for 23 years or something like that. And you might be like, well, mm. I've never heard of Arcuda, though. Um, yeah, that's right. And one of the things that I just kind of found this picture fascinating 
uh, doing their whiteboards, you know, look at all these toggles for PC, console, joystick, trackballs, trackball on and off, mouse on and off. Um, I mean, they're they're kind of really thinking about everything, right? Yeah. I mean, this is this is an insane amount of buttons. Plus it's having a lot of buttons. plus <laughs> having trackballs. Now those are thumb yeah. trackballs. Um, in case yeah. anybody's wondering, so not the whole palm spin. It would still be a thumb trackball. Um, that's just kind of everything that they were doing to get into uh, this, their Wizard Extreme cabinet, yeah. which um, looks a little bit dated. If these are, you got to realize that Arcuda, the cabinets that they sell are commercial. That's what this is. It's a commercial uh, design yeah. for commercial use. And they send their stuff to Japan. That's who their major partners are, are the yeah. Asian market, which is why their uh, manufacturing is over uh, in that region. Um, that's what they've been kind of doing, but they've been wanting to do home market, get into the home market. So they yeah. just basically showed this. This is their home cabinet, the Galaxy Extreme, I guess, uh, mm. the Mercury. But if you notice... It's got buttons here on the side, or ports for future buttons, which mm. could only be, you know, for one thing. Pinball. <laughs> pinball. That's right. Um, unfortunately, it'd be landscape pinball, but if you're looking for an all-in-one cabinet, it'd be kind of that action. Um, plenty of buttons you think going about on it, though, here. Like, that would be, like, the way that Akuta Market sees is that they're plug-and-play for consoles, and you chuck your console into the back of it, um, you connect it. It's all got the wires and everything in there yeah. for you to connect your console up to. You select it on that nice little front panel, which I'm going to um, highlight in one second. Here. Mm, and then, and then you literally play. So, consoles being a landscape orientation, it's perfectly suited yeah. for that market and that sort of, um, yeah. I guess, demographic that wants to connect their consoles up right. to. Right. This is basically for anybody that's been, you know, is a fan of at Games's Legends Arcade. Um, hmm. This is what this is, is like the big daddy of this. Like, yeah, uh, it's like these are pretty hardcore machines. I was gonna say they, these they are, are these are built not. industrial strength is what we're being told. Um, I mean, look yeah. at this massive door on the front because yeah. inside is shelving. That's where you put your console. <laughs> it's shelving. It's where shelving. You put all your consoles, not yeah. just one, but and a PC, like, anything you want to run. Them. That yeah. brings us to something that we can play. So remember, at games. They threw their little control, you know, panel, control thing panel thing up at the top so that your cables can droop all over the front of your playing, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Arcuda is putting this beast <laughs> on the front. And just, just look I at mean, this thing. I look at this thing. We've got headphone jack, microphone jack for, for whatever reason. Oh, probably for karaoke. For streaming. No, for streaming. And purposes. for karaoke. Okay, well, probably for karaoke as well. Yeah, maybe. Because um, I think these things have pretty decent sound systems in them. Oh, too. it's a so 2.1 will... uh, surround. Or, or with sub two point one so stereo with uh, sub, uh, big old volume knob on the front. Look at this yeah. four USB uh, three, three ports, ports, HDMI on the front, USB C on the front, and then all these over here are the power buttons to fire up your PC consoles. That so are that USB C uh, that USB C port is interesting. If they've made that USB C port Display Port compatible, then your Oculus could plug into that. See, um, that's you pretty. See, that's pretty you awesome could, to have. If mm -hmm. you can have a, an all-in-one machine that can play also, you know, you got your PC plugged in there, your consoles, and then you have VR, and you can just plug right in. It's just neatly all captured in one little box. Rather than having like, that wires is, and cables all over the place, yeah. that's That could be the center point of your games room, yeah. and then everything else hangs off that. Um, so that's pretty cool. We haven't heard official pricing yet. I know they're going to be a little bit... Uh, a little bit pricey. <laughs> We're, it's going to be a four figure, low four figures, mm. from what I understand. Um, mm. But but you look at of, it though, well, and you, you look realize, at it, well, yeah, probably like it should be probably four. Yeah, figures. and and like I said, these are they were designing these things for commercial use, mm. and they're not cheaping the product down to have it be for home use. They're basically using the same things. They actually have. Um, the bill of materials, in other words, haven't really changed. Well, like just they're using the same. Just so you know, it, it says here it's touchscreen, console controller, Sanwa Arcade, VR headset, gun shooter, and much, much more. 
cabinet supports JAMA Arcade and all current consoles and includes 2.1 subwoofer sound system. So you can plug, you know, your Neo Geo NVS boards into this thing and they will work. And I think my understanding with the, the Arcuda board systems they've got in there, it basically, it takes all the rough edges about off of actually connecting these boards up because typically what you'd need to do if you had a typical JAMA arcade cabinet what you would run in the arcade is that you have to worry about things like button maps and things like that when you're swapping over your JAMA um, hmm. boards and stuff inside because each JAMA board, while it's a standard, like the JAMA standard is a, is a thing, the way that some of these video game um, uh, companies have interfaced with the JAMA connector is subtly different. So it's sort of like it, the connector is jammer, but that's about where the standard ends right. sort of thing. Like there's there's some variances about how you actually connect up the controllers. So the the Arcuda software helps you with that and makes it okay. a lot easier. Mm. Okay. Um, so what we're going to try and do, they, they've been teasing also that they're basically doing like a month of announcements, I think is their whole idea. And by the mm. end of the month, they're going to get into their... Uh, designs for pinball, uh, what yeah. that's going to be. Um, so we're going to reach out to Arcuda, say, hey, is it time for us to talk with you again? <laughs> and mm. hopefully bring you guys Sounds some more... Sounds like it is. Yeah, hopefully bring you guys some more detailed information um, and maybe we can convince them to send us a unit. I don't know. Well, be, you know, I'm nice. in Australia. I know, you're in Australia. <laughs> no, uh, I'd, I'd probably have more chance of getting one. <laughs> oh, that's Because they're just down in, they're down in Newcastle, so... You know, that reminds me, Jared. What? Well, this whole uh, Haggis pinball, uh, it, which is Australia based. I'm not sure where in Australia they are. Um, oh, down south. That, that's uh, that's very generic, but I think <laughs> they're down in New South Wales. Okay. Um. um yeah. But anyway, they have gone and uh, basically where, what is it? Chicago Coin is the one doing the AFM and uh, Monster all the Bash, remakes. All the remakes. Uh, They've gone and talked to them and said, hey, do you mind if we remake some early 80s ballet machines? And they went, yeah, sure, go for it. So yep. they put out that they're going to be making Fathom. Fathom and my Revisited. God, it's gorgeous. Oh, uh, it's expensive. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's, it's about gorgeous. the same price as the Stern, the Stern Premium. But, but considering, you know, you know as, 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 uh, as I saw a few pinball commentators talk about, if you could find a Fathom in that condition, it'd be that much. It's going to be that much, and it's going to be running on thirty-year-old, thirty, hardware. forty-year-old hardware. Whereas this is going to be running on brand new hardware that's not going to fail on you. So, yeah. dang! But the important news: the important news. They want to do five valleys. Yeah, this is this the era. first. This is just the first, which makes me think. What do you think, Jared? Centaur. A ball yep. deluxe. Yep. So fathom. What would be the other two of that era? Bally. Early eighties. Uh, we're talking about narrow bodies here, not yes. wide bodies. Not wide bodies. Narrow yeah, bodies. Because there's there's some obvious choices there, like Paragon. Yeah. Um, now no, these are gonna be the narrow bodies. I'm trying to think yeah. of what are the other classic bally's from that. Maybe Medusa. Maybe mm. uh, Flash Gordon. Wait, is it? Is it Flash Gordon or the? The, which the one's Flash? The Flash? One of those. I know is mm. wildly popular. Mm. Um, I'm curious to know what the what the, what they're what the other two basically. What are the other two options of that era? We're talking 1980 to 1982, basically. Pretty much all the era of Squawk and Talk. Yeah, because Fathom's a Squawk and Talk, and yeah. Eight Balls a Squawk and mm -hmm. Talk. Centaur is too. Like Centaur redone with with. Because the thing is, with these revisited ones, when you buy the premium, yeah, you there's get two price a brand points. new, you get a brand new rule set in it as well, and you can switch between the two. So and Centaur is ripe rules. for a brand new oh, rule set. It's got it's got it's such got depth. potential. You guys have heard me talk about <laughs> when I played when I was playing uh, uh, the 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 VP eight, I think at the time. And, mm. you know, how I, much I loved the alternate ROM set that was being used for, for Centaur. So, mm. yeah, lots of potential. But anyway, yeah, I just thought, uh, wow, Jared's got a pinball company. It must be. It's probably going to be a lot less shipping, isn't it, Jared? 
<laughs> well, the problem is they're pricing everything in US dollars because yeah. they're smart. Yeah. So we're screwed in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Although the, the, at the at the time of recording, I think the US dollar is sitting around 76 cents. So it's not that bad. It's not the 61 cents that it was before the pandemic hit. Right. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's better news, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time. So yeah, we could do it. We're gonna we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a little uh, just so, you know this is for for you that watches on YouTube the entire episode. Uh, you're about to see what a mini episode formed purely <laughs> is gonna be. We're gonna do an actual review of Star Wars Pinball VR. So yeah, in a way, this is gonna be a little bit of a uh, little bit of a restart. It's gonna go a little something like this. Hey folks, we are the Block A Pinball Podcast. I'm Shut Your Trap, aka Chris Freebus, that guy over there, that's Jared Morgan. If you've been following us at all for some time, we've been uh, touting the aspect of Zen. And then most recently, we got into VR a little bit. And why would we be doing something like that? Well, because, yeah, the good old Star Wars VR pinball was coming down the pipe. We wanted oh, yeah. to get our hands on this, see what Zen has done since the last time they entered into the pinball VR market. That being said, want to get down a couple of points before we even start talking about the game itself. And that is what hardware we are using when we are taking a look at this. I myself am using an Oculus Rift plugged in with two sensors aiming at me, all the wires plugging into my PC. Because I'm on PC, I'm using the Steam version of Star Wars Pinball VR um, with... Rift, not available in the Oculus store. Jared, on the other hand. So what I'm using is I've got the Steam VR version. I'm running that on the Oculus Link cable. So directly tethered to my Quest 2 uh, without going wirelessly, um, which is the probably the most reliable way, albeit a little bit sort of clumsy, to connect to your Quest 2 um, to a PC. My PC build is a, um, a gaming PC running uh, RTX 2060 um, NVIDIA card with around 16 gig of RAM and an i7 processor. And then you're using the, uh, the touch controllers, correct? I'm using the touch controllers that come with the Quest 2. And obviously, I'm on the Quest side of things, it's a Quest 2 headset um, with you know standard, standard Quest 2 headset, um, which I'm also using as my um, head-mounted device head mounted screen um for the pc i myself i'm using uh that thing behind me there which is the pin sim controller um it is uh has accelerometer has plunger uh has rumble motors in it and it basically is a 360 controller board uh more or less that's what the computer thinks it is is a 360 controller uh, yes, I did try hooking up with the Quest or with the uh, touch controls, but when you got that thing, ditch those. <laughs> mm. So yeah. that is my review is basically how it functions using the Pinsum controller, not using the uh, touch controls. Yep. All that being so said, <laughs> we want to get that out of the way because it's important to understand what it is that we're looking at when we give our thoughts on the game. And I think mm. too often people just assume that it's, in this case, using Lace Grace hardware, which is Quest 2, which indeed Jared does have, but people using mm. it not tethered into the PC, um, you know, just using it purely as a freeform thing. And mm. I think mileage varies because of that. Yeah. So let's get into this then. Uh, first things first. Loading up the game, you're immediately greeted with the lovely, lovely lobby. If you're familiar mm. at all with FX2 VR, uh, your lobby was basically you standing in a static spot, being able to look around the room, go, hey, hey, this little room looks nice, and then highlighting a table, pushing go to the table, and whap, you were into the table. In this yeah. instance, you're actually able to move about the room. However, mm. as some people haven't discovered there's multiple ways of moving around that room i'm gonna let jared there is describe indeed. that so when we're talking about vr we're going to go into a technical term here and the term is locomotion so there are two ways that you can implement locomotion in a vr game you can actually have people walk around freely with like essentially 
three axes of movement. Um, and you usually use your left and your right controls to do that. Um, so you control your, essentially you can strafe and you can move around the place and you can literally do like circles around things if you want, like with a tracking camera. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is what they call teleport, where you have this little rectangle that goes out and it jumps down into a position in front of you and you teleport to there. The reason why they introduce these two methods of locomotion in games is because some people um, get discomfort when they're using VR, particularly new people to VR, and it makes them feel motion sick if they're moving around and their body is not moving around. So Zen has actually made two ways of locomoting, but unless you carefully read the onboarding things, you won't know they're there. Isn't that right, Chris? That would be uh, 100% correct. <laughs> um, as yeah. a matter of fact, when I first hooked up the PIM sim, I couldn't move around at all, and I was like, ah, crap. They bricked my system. It's not going to work for me, because mm. as far as I knew, there was no analog control on the PIM sim. Mm. Later found out that there is. <laughs> so uh, I'm not, we're not going to go into that in the review portion here. Just yet. But just yeah. so you know, yes, I can locomote around using the PIM sim. It's not, uh, unfortunately, you're, you're basically a stiff robot moving on four axis, uh, mm. and you have to move your head in order to see around the room. So yep. it's not the smoothest, wonderful thing, but damn it, I it don't works. care because I'm able to make it work. <laughs> but That's yeah, right. it, it's, you definitely have to go, like, I'll just say this right now. Finding the options menu in the game, the fact that you have to maneuver yourself over to a TV screen, push A, that will bring up your options. If you read down at the bottom that, oh, hey, you hit this button, and then the option screen, the options seem a little bit hidden. I'm a little bit disappointed mm -hmm. that it's not just a simple matter of hitting one button and whirp, options pop, and then you get to go through it. Um, it's sort of what they gave you. Like If you compare that experience to FX2 and the fact that you land in front of that screen, Yes. Uh, when you first start the game up um, and if you want to go and adjust the options there even if you move like because in fx2 you essentially you look around and that's what selects the things in the room so your your actual view position is what actually highlights things and then you, you basically uh, tap a or click the trigger and you'll go directly to it but when the difference between the the i guess the that Let's call it the lobby area, the lounge area in FX2 versus the the lounge area in um, uh, Star Wars. Is that the options is almost like a hidden secret menu, as you say, Chris? Yeah. Like you got to know, you got to you basically got to hit the right grip or the RG button, which is like this one that you activate with your thing down there, and that will open up the the settings menu. So it's not easy to find, and the locomotion settings are in the controller settings controller settings that's right yeah so and see this might be it, a case again where me using it on the pin sim the only way i can get into the options is to maneuver around to the tv screen enter the tv screen and then down the mm -hmm. bottom it lists oh if i hit my right button that's going to let me pop up the options menu but if i'm actually at a table playing the table i cannot bring up any of these options no so the only way you can do it is to use the pause function in game so if you're in in a game and you want to pause the game, you get a screen that allows you to do some basic things, but you don't get to actually change the global options in there. You can change things like volume and stuff like that, but controller scheme and controller map and everything has to be done through that TV interface, um, which is a little bit restrictive. I guess once you get it set up, you could argue that you don't need to see it again, but if you're well, sort of experimenting with stuff, you kind of do. And this is what I was going to say. The lobby itself once you're used to it, it's pretty cool. And mm. now it becomes, hey, this is an interesting VR environment to walk around, um, take a look. And I can actually share a little bit of what some of this looks like. So this is your lobby. So you got posters that you can change, um, trinkets around the room that you can change. Uh, it's this is very all... themable. Yeah, it's very themable. Um, you know, all this stuff is things that you can earn while you're playing the game, you know, mm. full size, uh, you know, costume statues, models. if you want models, things like that. Um, so that all is, you know, pretty cool. It's just, like I said, it took me a little while to even find the leaderboards because that's on a whole nother TV screen 
elsewhere. Yeah, it's like, and, and it is. And it was like, it's, it's in the kitchen. Yeah. And I'm walking it's, around. That's I'm like, where you look you know, for I swear there's leaderboard somewhere. And then you find it. But once you know where it is, well, then it becomes kind of cool that you're, you know, it's your environment. You're moving around. You're functioning in this environment. I think, though, if you think about it, like this is the first time that Zen's done VR like this. Like they've, they've gone away from the model where they've got that sort of like static view in the room in FX2 to like a fully explorable environment. So I think the intention behind putting things in weird places around the the place is to get you to look around sure. and experience the environment. And that's fair enough. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so aside from the lobby, which is a nice experience, then it becomes a matter of going in and actually playing the games. Hmm. Um, the tables that you play, there's eight currently that are in there. We're hoping that they're going to, you know, eventually add more. But yeah. uh, what you get, you get the brand new table, the Mandalorian. You also get yep. the brand new table, Star Wars Classic Collectibles. There yep. is also Rogue One. Yep. There's Masters of the Force. <laughs> Which I'm going to say, my God, does 3D help that? Boy, yeah, I yeah. may not like it's... the table still, but it certainly helps you understand where the hell you're supposed to be shooting the ball. Um, yeah, Masters also... of the Force. Sucks less in VR. Yes, yes. I, I also realized for the first time, hey, there's actual prequel characters in that. How would it come? Oh, up there is. Up? Yeah, Darth Maul is one of the the cardboard. Oh yeah, yeah. And nail and and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, so I guess they did eventually touch upon the prequels. They just never did yeah. a dedicated prequel movie. Uh, pinball machine. And then the yeah. remaining uh, the remaining four, uh, Star Wars Rebels. New Hope, and then f- Empire of the Je- and Jedi. So yep. you basically got your original trilogy plus Rogue One, which fed directly into the original trilogy. Uh, your prequel in <laughs> Master of the Force and Star Wars Rebels, uh, and then your collectibles, which has you know it's just a mishmash of again original trilogy, and right. obviously the Mandalorian, which takes place pretty much right after original trilogy. So oh, right, yeah. we're kind of I'm in a whole little little, uh, little era right there. Uh, yeah. Hey, but... I wanted to say something yeah. at this point about the... Like, we're talking about the tables. There's eight of them there. But there's a really nice feature, which is just essentially... It's not like a, a big game feature, but it's a quality of life thing that brings you into the illusion when you're in VR. And that is when you select each of these tables, the image of the playfield changes, but not only that, the scale of the cabinet changes to fit the playfield. Yes. Have you noticed that? Yes, and I now, think that I is can actually really interesting. show this. And one second, let me bring up. It's really interesting because by far, here we go. The... So here we go. Watch, watch the width of the table change as the table changes. Oh, it got narrower. <laughs> Much narrower. Much narrower. Yeah. Um, that's a so, little bit wider, but not too terribly bit. If they show Jedi, Jedi is a freaking square. It's like playing oh, an old Stern Electronics machine. No, it's <laughs> it's basically playing Star Race, is what it is. It's a super wide body. It is yeah. a massive wide body. It's the biggest. It's the biggest in all of them because the environment goes so far outside of the playfield itself. It's such right. a really. It's a really immersive. So table there's your table one. selection menu, and you'll notice that uh, there probably should be. A sliding bar over here. About there. About yeah, there. That's a, in, but there uh-huh. isn't. <laughs> but yet yes. there's this black box there. So there, I think that's a pretty good indicator that, uh, yes, we're going to be getting some more. Some more tables. Yeah. Um, the, the detail on these things is really great. And they did a good job of, you know, incorporating artwork on the sides of all the cabinets. Um, yes, yep. you get your characters floating around on the sides of the... Uh, that right there is an immersive mode on Mandalorian, and yep. I I really like it. <laughs> I didn't like because it's that table view, and uh. they let you have this. Hey, you can get down a ball label table view, which it's kind of a interesting novelty. But I would not recommend playing pinball in that. No, but, I tried. It's really hard. <laughs> yes, but this particular mode. It's fun it's, because it's, it's designed great. for that view. Yeah. Um, it and really I'm playing comes these at half speed, well. folks, just so you know. I'm playing this at half yeah, speed. Yeah, right. this is not lagging. No. This is so we can talk no. to it. And... 
So. Yeah, the collectibles table has some really cool stuff floating around it. I, I think you could buy that. That's all these things you could buy. Yes. Like you could, that, yes, that's a drone that you could v, buy. They did steal that drone before. Mm. No doubt about it. Um, okay, now I'm going to pause. Oop, I'm going to let it go one more second. Right there. So our DMD. This is going to be a, a quick note. I want you guys to look at that DMD and notice something. It ain't got no dots. Where's the dots? It's just an yeah. MD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's not even a matrix. It's just a D. It's a yeah, right. It's, <laughs> it's just a, a D. display. Um, it's a D. That's all you got. We're you got gonna go no into that in a little there. bit, but this is one of the things that uh, <laughs> some people have been pointing out about the DMD. Why does the DMD not look good? Um, and we, are, I, I've got some suggestions, but we'll, we'll, which we'll bring up soon. We're, we'll we'll get there. Yeah, but I'm just gonna say it's mm. it's a feature that is available on color DMD, also, and I've never liked yes. it on that either. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's play a little no. bit more here. Just give a little uh, taste of what all the there's Star Wars Rebels, I believe. That's Rebels, yeah. yeah. That's Rebels. Uh, yeah. There's New Hope. Kaboom. Rogue One. Rogue One benefits also from being 3D. Oh, I hugely. Say. This one really there, comes Look at Jedi. Up. Look at how freaking wide Jedi is. Yeah. And the reason why it has to be that wide is because of this ramp right over here. That's it. Because yep. that ramp right over there... Exceeds the well, width of a table. <laughs> well outside the play field. Have you ever tried? Because uh, we we do play on flat screen. Yeah, we play this in vertical mode, and so much is gone when you play this thing mm -hmm. in vertical mode. Mm -hmm. It chops off so much of either side of the play field. It is amazing how much is. And I'll note that it's something that for people that have been playing the arcade one up Star Wars cabs have complained. They were like, "How come Jedi has so far away and has so much dead space?" This is why, because it's a square. This table. is the reason, and you can't. It's, it's you basically can't widen the virtual cab. It's it really is like this whole thing is the epitome of world on the glass. Yes, like this thing here. It's a whole theme environment. Yeah, there you go. The view that you'll never use. Um, yeah, and then of course right. you've got these uh, moments, these little uh, mini game moments where you're completely in that virtual, being able to battle Vader and such. Yeah, you can look up at any time and select your side as well when you're in front of yeah. the play field, um, or in front of the table. Now, these mini modes are amazing. I don't know if you've experienced this one yet. No. I've only experienced oh. the uh, lightsaber training ball on the Falcon. So that's pretty good. This one's pretty immersive too. Like the uh, the Darth Vader one where you're in there smashing him around with a lightsaber right. is really good. But that, that speeder mode one, it's so cool in VR. And then just all the um, decorations that are in there. You can change carpeting also. Uh, literally everything in there pretty much. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to the actual gameplay hmm. now again, I'm using the Rift. I'm yep. not experiencing any lag. I've not experienced any crashes of the game. Hmm. Uh, I don't play with ball trails because I don't personally like them. So I oh. turn those off. I don't know if that affects performance at all or anything else like that. But as far as I'm concerned, my gameplay, and I was popping between this and FX2, FX2. VR, yeah. I'm not noticing any differences uh, per se. I do feel that this is an evolution up from FX2 VR hmm. by minuscule margins. Uh, just again, when I say that, the to me the actual pinball gameplay is virtually identical. But in terms of the VR environment and doing all that action, um, I think that that's where this is obviously an improvement of such. But mm -hmm. we're not talking about a night and day difference at all. It's subtle uh, between these two programs on the Rift. Now, Jared, I don't know how it is for you with the uh, with the Quest Two. Okay, so with the Quest 2, and this is in both Quest 2, um, what, you know, the on the, the Oculus Quest, Quest 2 experience and the Steam VR experience played through the Quest 2. Um, the, uh, I've definitely noticed a problem with aliasing in this game. Um, the, you know, aliasing for those people who aren't aware of what that is, it's the shimmery lines you get on very thin lines uh in in video games that because of the the way that the computer renders a straight line on an angle it sort of like essentially steps the, the line and aliasing sort of smooths out that line a bit by sort of piecing in the information between 
Um, but I don't know what's going on in the in both builds of this. That the PC version is less affected by this. It still has a few aliasing issues. But the Quest Two, the, the whole thing is really heavily aliased. Like you see on, for example, the Mandalorian table on the the um, the left hand side of the table where the um, uh, buildings are and you see like these vents on the top of the buildings they're just like shimmering and strobing and as you move even if you move your head left to right the whole thing like the whole mm. shimmer rotates like this so it's heavily aliased at the moment um there's definitely some problems with depth of field clarity as well um in both the um steam version and the quest 2 version so if you compare it to fx2 vr on both steam and on oculus uh, oculus quest 2 the the back of the play field is still clear and visible whereas on all of the star wars tables the back of the play field is is out of focus and aliased like all the textures in the back are actually also aliased as well um and it, it, there's just not as much clarity. Like when you're looking down at the play field from a play level view, um, most of the inserts in FX2, you can make out clear enough that you know what they are. But when you're looking at the inserts at the back of the play field on Star Wars, they're illegible. You have to actually go all the way up to them. And as you start to zoom into the play field surface, it instantly starts to become beautifully rendered. Like it's clear as anything when you actually get nice and close to the play field. You can clearly see everything. But as you start to move out, the depth of field just disintegrates and you're back to like blurry mess. And see, so, there's where playing on the Rift, everything is kind of a blurry mess already. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a feat. So, so I was fine. In other words. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, the same thing where if I lean in, everything does become you know, resolves nice and obviously sharp. nice and sharp mm. because I'm making it big. Um, yeah. again, the resolution on a rift is not the same as a resolution on a quest. Mm. Uh, the faces of the 3d characters I did notice just kind of look like blobs. They were yeah, that's very much not defined. And again, you really had to lean in order to, uh, to get that. These are yeah. issues that I'm hoping can be improved upon. And these are all, solvable issues they're so, all solvable and i think that's where we kind of go with just like where we're going to go with this review is the game fun yes yes it is is it worth buying right now personally i don't have a problem with it i mean i find it very playable and i find it very fun still uh that it's not there's been a lot of vitriol that i've seen <laughs> elsewhere mm. And I think a lot of that is just hyperbole and people trying to just, you know, make a standout point. But the game plays, I'm not having personal issues with it crashing. Again, I don't know what it's like on PSVR. We don't, neither of us no, have that. Neither of us have that system. That. Um, yeah. And if there were issues on, on that front. But on the PC front, uh, it's completely playable right now. Is it going to be mm. the best VR experience? No, but again, there's definitely room for improvement. I think... That's mm. where we're going to go with right now. Um, I'm going to take... Yep. I know Jared has a lot more thoughts because of the quest, but my yep. thoughts are all related to that bad boy, the pin sim. Uh, mm. Something with that we highlighted with FX2 VR, when I load up that game and I am push go for a table, bam, it is the perfect height. I'm dead centered. Mm. It feels exactly correct where my hands are resting on the pin sim virtually that is exactly where my hands are resting like should be resting on the cabinet i mean i can even yeah. kind of squint underneath my headset and so with one eye i'm kind of getting the overlay of where the the virtual table is and with my other eye i'm seeing where my hand physically is and they're dead lined up yeah it's, it's wonderful it is fantastic how that is in Star Wars VR, when you approach the table, the table seems pretty low down. Mm. Then you start the table, bam, the table is all of a sudden really high. And to the point that it almost seems like I am six inches shorter than I actually am. So I wind mm. up having to reset the view by squatting down six inches, then resetting the view, which, by the way, resetting the view is difficult on the pin sim. We'll go into mm. that. That's not 
purpose of the review. Um, yeah. But I do think the approach to the table, when you fire it up, it all of a sudden is much higher than I feel necessary. And I don't mm. know if that's Zen's way of dealing with this resolution if you like you said, trying to lean in mm. or not. But I don't like it because then the second you exit the game, the table's back down to another visual level. And I think they should be consistent. When you walk up to that table and you press go, it should just still be there at that same height. Um, now, kind of spoils riddle me this. A bit. With regard to FX2, um, the tables in FX2, they were all a mixed size, weren't they? Like, there were some wides, some narrows. There was a variety yeah, of... Yeah, sort of Zen tends happens. to make wider-bodied machines, but yes, mm. they were. They all... I think they all fit within the constraints of of the pin sim where my hands were. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember if like, if what you're experiencing with the pin sim and the sort of positional um, experience you get there is because of the great disparity in widths in Star Wars. That tables. should not affect the height. That's true. So if they were scaling the size of the hand positions to your pin sim, so the width was the same, that would affect the height. So if it was like, if they were going right, this is like, for example, episode six or seven, it's super wide. Um, so therefore you'd have to zoom out. So the, the actual position of your hands was relative to the cabinet at that height. So I wonder if that's what you're experiencing there with that. I don't think it is. Um, again, we'll go into this uh, after the review. Because <laughs> mm. this might be just, you know, quirk of, pin sim and i'm not going to knock a game for a very 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 niche product um it, your, your you know, product there this. is is a niche of an already niche exactly market. exactly so, um yeah. my only other complaint though uh and and the funny thing is is this is a complaint that we had with stern pinball stern. Mm -hmm. um but my other complaint is just the fact that i want to be able to access the options with the push of a button and not have to go over to the TV screen to get those options. I want yep. to be able to, while I'm playing a game, go into options, make an adjustment, and go right back into the game. And currently, mm -hmm. it's a no, nope, you got to exit the game, walk over, go do it over there, walk back to the game, try it out. Are you happy with it? No, okay, got to go back up. The other big issue that I'm having right now is button mapping. There's only two options mm. on any of the buttons. That's true. Yep. And it, you're stuck with whatever Zen is issuing you. And mm -hmm. I don't like that. And I know that some of the VR people don't like it either because for them, uh, the A button apparently is not your usual select button. It's one no, of the triggers. No, it's not. It's right. a trigger. It drives me nuts. Like, it really does. It's right. such a jarring experience. Now, for me... I want it on my A button because I'm using what's essentially a 360 controller. Yes. Zen, let us map our own buttons. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So and particularly the... if you if you have a because you can connect an Xbox three an Xbox um, one X Bone controller mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Oculus Quest two as an input device, um, and if you do that, you should also be able to map the buttons the way you want as well. Yeah. Um, it, 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 you are able to do it in FX, uh, two, you should be able to do it here. So yeah, my, my biggest gripes with the game are all controller related. Jared, I'll let you, uh, take your biggest gripes. I think the, the biggest problems I've had at the moment is just the, the, the sharpness of the graphics, um, mm -hmm. on, on the game. I also noticed that, um, I think when Mel was describing, um, the state of play with, um, pinball FX, and physics and stuff the legacy tables are everything you know basically the legacy tables included all the ones that are in this vr uh, experience but the idea was that they were apparently going to receive williams physics on them as part of the, the remap they no, didn't the no, only did table the only table that has it is mandalorian and it is obvious yeah really like you try obvious. And do it on <laughs> <laughs> and collectibles, even no, collectibles doesn't collectibles have it. doesn't have, and I'm really shocked that collectibles doesn't have it, except for Me the too. fact of who designed it. Uh, mm. May not have been a fan of that physics. Model. I don't think that's. I don't think but, that that is a consideration anymore. The, the Williams physics is the new model, and it's not there. Which is no. like I was trying to do flipper tricks. I was going, why? Why can't I tap pass? Like, what and is I'll, going and on? And I'll say this too: with the 
One of the dead giveaways that people look for to go, hey, is it using a billion physics or not, is if you got your flipper down and a ball comes and you do a dead pass, the flipper will now give a little twitch L- on little it. A little twitch. Okay. Mm. Mandalorian, it does not give a twitch. That flipper stays rock solid. But yep. the bounce of the ball is very much Williams. I've had ball spin where the ball will hit the rubber and kind of stop in its tracks and kind of change direction. I've had that yep. happen. That's completely a Williams physics thing. Um, just how, yeah, the flipper tricks that you can do, they're there for the Williams. They are do not feel that way on any of the other tables. All the other tables feel like no. standard uh, Zen. that we've been playing for forever yes. now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's really weird that they would mix physics models in the game. I just don't understand that. Like, that would be something I would think would be fixed. I hope it's something that comes down the pipeline that maybe it's just they still are working on it. And I think they've got bigger fish to fry at the moment. They do. Think- they do. I think um, the resolution issues, everyone, like it's in every second review on yeah. the Oculus store that, you know, oh, the graphics aren't sharp. Everything is like seething and aliasing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I know they're working on it too. Like they're actually trying to solve this problem. Um, and, you know, there's there's lots of discord around about, you know, what they might do to fix it. I'm sure that they've already read. I'm sure they've already Googled things. <laughs> and They've probably read all those same articles that everyone else is pointing them to. Um, so I can only assume that this is a solvable problem because the aliasing isn't as bad on PC. I can say that. So on Steam VR, I'm not seeing the aliasing at all. And if they could just get the Quest 2 version to that level, I'd probably be okay with it. Then they can start working on the depth of field clarity issues that are in the game. But just get rid of that aliasing. It's so hard in my eyes. I can't stay in VR for long with it um, at the moment. It's It actually really hurts after a while so it'd be great if they could fix that up real okay. quick <laughs> but like you said do we think it's a you can purchase it now absolutely Would yeah. you be hurting yourself by waiting a little while no because patched patches Not are really. happening as we speak and have been they did like a, a almost like a, a patch a week after it was released yeah. to solve some big problems big bugs which we'll yeah. go into after this review um, so patches are happening and they're happening pretty frequently. So you can expect the issues that you're seeing now on launch to be resolved pretty quickly, I think. When I say quickly, over the next two months, potentially, right? Um, I would think. Is this a game that uh, will make you throw your controller down and uh, spit at the virtual screen and be like, this is utter crap, I can't believe this got released, it's like shovelware? No. Mm, no. No, I can't really say that. Like, no, it's got its I problems, can't say that at all. but they're all solvable. Like, exactly. it's fun to play. Even like, you can look past the aliasing issues and just spend less time in VR. You I still will have say this: time if it. you have been able to enjoy the other VR pinball games that are out there, if you found enjoyment with those, there is no reason why you shouldn't find enjoyment with this. Yeah, they've all got their issues, but they're all still completely playable. So, yeah. And that this game is no exception. You can have a lot of fun with it. And, you know, I will highlight this. The mini games in it and the career progression, so much fun, right? Yep. Those those challenge modes that you get in this game, they really add a huge dimension to this game. And if you haven't actually delved into them, if you've just been playing the games by themselves, you've got to give them a go. They're really cool. Like, you're chasing parsecs, like number of parsecs that you've actually done in some of them. It's a distance-based goal. So... It's so cool. Like they really put some thought into way these things work. And those modes are really important because they'll give you access to force powers and you can upgrade your force powers by completing those modes. So make sure you don't ignore that part of the game. It's really important. So anyway, there you go. Uh, it's it's a review analysis, uh, you know, one of these a things. A bit of everything. A little bit of everything. If you want to know more about uh, what we have to really say, uh, more in depth and kind of uh, us going off on tangents, then uh, certainly circle back to the uh, full episode of the uh, Block A Pinball podcast. Uh, this would be episode 222 that you'd be wanting to uh, hunt down. Anyway, mm-hmm. thanks yeah. for giving us a watch. And keep on flipping. Keep on flipping. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> oh, right. That's, that's Jared, Jared's like, wait, I need a tagline. <laughs> keep on flipping. Keep on that's flipping. That's right. Okay. So now let's get into some nitty gritty here. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to start mine with the with the pin sim cab. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the issues that I have been... Okay, first off, for anybody that has one of these, let me tell you how to activate 
I did not know this. Jeremy Williams, dude, I have the utmost respect for you because you built this into this prior to this game, and I had no clue. He's apparently done some hot-button combos on it. And the hot-button combos... Mm. So, when I built this, I went a little bit overboard on all the buttons that I put in, and it turns out I went the right amount of overboard. <laughs> right. So, apart from my A, B, X, Y buttons up on top, apart from having my joystick up top, apart from having my plunger, my launch button, my two sets of flippers, and I've even got uh, on here the third Y button down here to activate force <coughs> powers with. Um, I also <laughs> have my start button and my back button. This back button turns out very, very important. Because in order to navigate around in VR, I need to push this back button and at the same time push up on the joystick. If I do that, suddenly my joystick is like the left analog stick and I can move around the room, mm. which is fantastic. It let me play the game with the pin sim. And I was yeah. worried that I was not going to be able to. Obviously, there is no right joystick. So, so you're that's... pretty much strafing around the room like this, basically. Yep. Strafing, and, and like... if I want to see anything, I got to move my head move in order head. to see it. So it's but a it little. Lets you do it. It lets me do it. It's a little awkward. I'll take awkward. Um, you know, believe me, I'll take awkward. That's that's great. Here's where the issues come in. Like I said, in order to change, in order to recenter my table view of where I'm at and everything. In Pinball FX VR 2, that button right there, my X button, I press that, bam, would it recenter me. It's what yep. worked in Stern VR, or uh, yeah, in Stern VR, worked in Pinball FX 2 VR. Did not work in uh, Zachariah. No. Because Zachariah's centering is a whole different ball of wax. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting the same thing. Unfortunately, the only buttons that are mapped for recentering that Zen has set up is R3, which is a push down, or L3. Yeah. That's so it. So both on your analog pots, basically, you got to push the analog in. Which I don't have. Mm. So and no recentering. So the only way I can recenter, so there's this immersive mode that puts you down into the table, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm able to access the immersive mode by, I believe, I'm trying to think which button. It's a Y is. button. Is it the Y, y button? button? Yeah. It might be the Y button. I'm not it sure. It is. Anyway. By default, it is. I, th I think I have mine on the B button. But anyway, on the back button. Okay. Um, anyway, that'll put me into the immersive. Then I need to center myself up and squat so that I can adjust the height. And then I tap it, and then it'll center me according Jumping to what my out. new height is. Again, if they would just use whatever was being used in FX2 VR, where that table was always dead center, where I needed it at the correct height, I wouldn't have to worry about this. It would but I'm constantly having to change <clears throat> that up. Now, Jared, to your question, is it a case of because of the cabinet width? Has nothing mm. to do with the cabinet width because the, the, the table, like I said, is staying at the same height, regardless of what table I switch it to. So, yes, in the case of Jedi, suddenly it's much wider than what my pin sim is. Which, mm. at first I was like, well, this is kind of weird. But then you quickly, you quickly forgive it. Um, that's, yeah. not a, that's not an issue. And it doesn't matter if I reset my height so that the, the table is much lower. It's still much too, it's much wider than Wide. what the pin sim is. So that's not, that's not a factor. Um, okay. That's not playing into this at all. It's just a matter of why it thinks I'm six inches shorter. And again, when we walk up to the table, the table's pretty low on the walk it up. Is. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you select, wham, the table jumps up in height, which is just bizarre. Something mm. that Zen fortunately has fixed with the patch note was when you went into immersive, it was always sending you to either the left or the right. I think it was sending you to the left of the table. Yeah, They've now had it so that you're now sent to the middle of the table, which yep. helps with the jarring transition. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, as opposed to you going, whoa, wait, wait, where the hell am I? What? Um, Why am I sitting over the left flipper? Yeah, exactly. If a... we could just map our own buttons, 
that button that I'm used to for recentering would be would work. Would work. I just mm-hmm. I don't know why they locked us in to two sets and that's it. That it is a very bizarre choice that I think because they, made. they expect because of the the limited scope of the the supported headsets, they all support touch control. Um, the Rift has its touch controllers, mm-hmm. so you know, and they're expecting people to use those. That was their design, I think, is which. Okay, but so in which case, why didn't they do it with the standard button that all the VR people are used to then for select? Yeah, I don't know. I can't answer that question, but it's an interesting one. You know, um, I I can't believe that it would take up massive resources to allow button remapping, but I'm not a designer, so I don't know. Pretty Um, sure that's a solved problem because literally every game lets you do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think it's a big problem. I don't know. Maybe there is a limitation in button remaps on touch controllers in Oculus. Maybe they deliberately don't let you remap that much um, because they want to keep it, the experience relatively consistent. But I'm not sure if that is even a thing. I hope it's not because that seems very limiting if yeah. you have to, as a developer, only offer a certain set of buttons. I mean... Flipper buttons, I can understand you would probably only want those on the trigger, and those probably don't need to be remapped. Um, but all the other interface buttons, those should be selectable. Uh, my own, my <clears> other <throat> issue, some people have mentioned they don't like the, they think the lighting has taken a hit on this game, mm. as opposed to FX2 VR. Here's where I think mm. the difference is. In FX2 VR, your ambient room light dims. It does. It dims big time, which makes the table look much better. Gee, how many times have we been saying that? Yep. In Star Wars, the room never changes ambient light. It's bright as it always is. It's you're in, you're basically playing the pinball in a fully lit room. Like, uh, they need to dim the lights when you're in pinball. They absolutely do. They really do. do. And because it would it would really highlight because in in both builds now, it, given that the Oculus Two, the, the the Quest Two, is running a mobile chipset, it's a pretty powerful one. It's got a dedicated GPU, but it's not a PC. It doesn't have sixteen gig of RAM and a really high end video card. But what I've noticed is the the effects that you get in the Quest Two aren't that much different to the pc Mm -hmm. so there's a little bit of fidelity lost in some of the effects but for the most part you're kind of getting a similar experience across the two i'll give you an example in mando when you launch the ball and it goes up to the um razor crest mini play field in um steam there is a scan line that goes up that play field now um that's nice and smooth and it looks like a radar line in uh, steam but in quest 2 it's almost like a block that transitions up Hmm. thing like that so that's one graphical difference the thing that's interesting though is when you shoot the cauldron to start a mission um the ball starts spinning and there's like sort of like almost like a um what would you call it not oh, a mist but up. there's yeah it heats up and there's like sort of like a uh, blobs in it that are floating in there sure. now i thought for sure like i played steam first and i thought for sure that's not going to be in the quest version but they managed to do it so it's probably a little less fidelity, but it's still there. It's not like it's cut from the release. So that was interesting as well. Um, when you when you have a um, uh, uh, on the upper right flipper in Mandalorian, there's like this sort of like stuff floating above the flipper. Yes, um, to you... indicate that uh, there's a there's an actual shot underneath that upper flipper. It's a it's a, a hole. And it's only it's accessible by the opposite side's mid flipper to flip yeah, into just, it. Just but, blow the cauldron, basically. Right. So instead of having an insert light lighting up saying, hey, this hole is active, no one said There's now it's sparkles. Stuff. There's sparkles. Yeah, the sparkles. So the sparkles are, th- are there in Quest 2, but they don't quite have the texture and light that the, um, the Steam VR version does. So the... Like in the case of Mando, and indeed in the case of Collectors as well, there's there's not a lot of disparity between the two. Like you're not in, and this was sort of the case in um, FX2 VR as well. Like you, 
we did a video on this actually yeah where we had side by side the two things you get a little bit of extra flair and maybe a little bit of extra lighting on the pc version versus the um the quest 2 version but it wasn't jarring enough to make you go oh, i'm really missing out here on quest 2 so do you um, feel that uh do you feel that basically we're all playing a quest 2 build of this game or even a quest one build of this game even those that are on steam vr as opposed mm. to there being a dedicated pc build to utilize not just for me on a rift but for you using your link cable to utilize full fidelity of graphics i think it's not so much that they're using a mobile build and mm. for the record the, the way you can do things in quest is you can target you can actually have completely separate build profiles for the different headsets that are supported in quest so you could have a quest 2 build profile that has more graphics better aliasing and stuff like that quest one you can downscale things because the processor isn't as powerful nor is the screen resolution so you have to like back off some things and make some sacrifices in quest one um and on rift through steam vr of course you can throw the whole book at it but i'm just wondering here is rather than trying to go hey We've got a PC VR experience. We've got a Quest experience. I wonder if they're just going, we've got an experience. And rather than actually going, let's like throw the full gamut of effects and everything at PC and limit the Quest, let's actually try and make the experience kind of similar across all the platforms so that people don't feel like they're missing out. So mm. that's my only thought about that. It's almost like they're going... It may be a situation of let's for now do that while we're sorting out some of the performance And then hopefully and, um, build up to it. That's what I'm thinking. Throw the book so at I'm it thinking, later. So, I mean, I've said that there are definite similarities between the two. You're getting a minor graphical quality of life improvement on the Steam VR version. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Having both, this is my thoughts on the matter. At the moment, with the current build, this is as of the the um, the ninth of um, May, twenty twenty one. I would be leaning towards the Quest two version. Aliasing issues aside, purely because it's just so much more convenient. Like, right, you throw the headset on, start the game, you're in, bang. You don't have to start your pc up oh great i've got a steam update i got to install oh mm -hmm. great now the thing's updated i got to plug the cable in i got to like not like route it in such a way they're not tripping over it which is the biggest problem with vr in my opinion it, it removes all those barriers with the quest 2 version because you're not sacrificing that much graphical fidelity in it um it for me it's like if you've got both and you have an option to buy steam or the quest 2 version i'm going with the quest 2 all the time because it doesn't really offer that much difference in graphical quality if down the line that changes and they really start to open up the floodgates with the steam vr version really start to utilize the power of the pc like my my pc build is a, it's i'm running an rtx 20 uh, 2060 in vr land that's a mid-range experience yeah <laughs> like you really need to be running a, a rtx 30 series um card now to actually get really high-end visuals and this laptop is essentially behind the curve now it used to be quite good but now it's actually not considered a top-end um, hardware profile so you know even with that at the moment like i'm getting an okay experience in there i think i'm losing some um resolution though i think i might be losing a bit of um screen refresh so i think i'm on 72 hertz instead of 90 hertz for the screen refresh so that will be affecting clarity as well to a little extent um whereas i think the quest 2 is running on 90 hertz natively i think not sure but i presume that's pretty much the standard now for all quest 2 games so um i still think for me it will be the quest 2 version over the steam version it'll be interesting to see if they then uh, therefore do any ramping up um i do believe that he said, I think Deep is the one that uh, designed Mando, and Deep is obviously yep. the champion of William's physics. Whereas yes. Star Wars Collectibles, I think, was uh, developed by uh, Zoltan. Zoltan. Mm. And 
I'm I'm shocked that that one's not available with Williams Physics. The other yep. tables. I'm not quite surprised because I do think that they're probably still in the process of optimizing them for when they eventually yeah, come yeah. out in in FX pinball later pinball on. FX. Yeah. yeah. So I would hope that those become an option later on, but yeah. I, d I think it's kind of inexcusable for collectibles not to have it right out the gate. Um, yeah, I don't understand that decision no. at all. I don't know why that is missing the Williams physics. Those two tables being brand new, yeah. they're not part of the legacy, no. right? They are they're essentially the two tables that will be featuring in uh, Pinball FX later on in the year. So they should be having those physics as of now. Yeah. Like there's no reason why they shouldn't. Uh let's talk about those two tables real quick. Um Yeah, okay. Real quick. Mando. Mm. I really dig it. I've Great. barely cracked the surface on it. Me I want neither. To, I want it's to, so hard to get through. It is, but I want to crack the surface. It's it's engaging. I like yeah. it. It's easy to follow. It's the it tells you where to shoot for the most part. I still wish they would do callouts to tell you where they, to shoot. It's they really need to one aspect that Zan then does not ever do. I want them to be like you know, like call Williams out the ramp. Call out the yep. ramp that you're supposed to be hitting. Um, don't make me look at the DMD unless you hold the ball and give me time to read the DMD. Yes. Um, especially in VR where it's hard to read <laughs> the text. Um, yeah. Or, you know, call out the ramp. But Mando does a really good job of blinking the insert light so that you know where it yes. is. Collectibles? I, I have <clears throat> no clue what is going on. No clue. I have put quite a bit of time into this table purely because it was interesting enough for me to go, okay, what do I need to do to make this thing blow up? And the the biggest frustration for me on this particular table is actually starting the collectibles mode. Now, when I say the collectibles mode, that's where all the figures pop out of the play field, go to their plinths that are on the play field where you collect them. So to do that, what you have to do is you have to shoot up to the Death Star loop. So the, the ball has to go around. Actually, it goes, yeah, this way, and then back down. And then you got a little flipper that you got to shoot it and make it do the whole loop again and go back up to the top. Now, I can count... Like I've had probably about 30 plays of this table over the last, like since it was released, probably more. And I can probably count on my hands, on both hands, how many times I've been able to successfully get that mode started with what looks like a clean shot from that flipper. Um, I, I just cannot, it like literally just goes like around the loop, just up and then dribbles back down again every single time it drives me nuts but the thing is that too is that there's no there's nothing that tells you that that's what you need to do there's nothing that tells you that because obviously no. if you're hitting a combo shot you don't have time to hit the shot and go oh where's the blinking light yeah especially if it's off a flipper off a flipper and in mode starts should never be that difficult difficult and that's right one of the things that i don't understand is it'll be like oh you've collect select the character Okay, I why? select the character, but why? What is my point? Yeah. It, what is? Am I locking in one character and then moving on to the next character and then then moving on to the third character? And once I've got all three of them locked, that then they go. I don't know. It's not telling me anything. Yeah, um, that's the, that's it's... the biggest problem. It's like, why am I selecting a character? Like, what is the purpose of? It? Do they unlock different features in the game? I mean, Short I answer, literally they don't. feel like <laughs> well, how I feel when I play Tesla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... Hey, yeah, it that's looks not a great compliment. No, it looks interesting, and I would like to figure it out, but you have made it really difficult to figure out. Um, so anyway, of those two tables, I think that we can both agree. Mando, yay. Star Wars Collectibles? Mm. Not easy. No. Not, not an easy nut to crack, that one. Um, as I've said, well, again, same nut, not hard to crack. It's For me, that's Masters of the Force. It's just a table that mm. I don't understand. Um, what it wants you to do. And part of that is this whole light side, dark side. You know, if you hit so many shots on this side, well, that opens up the dark side modes. But if you hit so many shots on this side, that opens up the light side modes. And it just becomes a mishmash of confusion. Um, mm. But at least visually, I can understand 
where a lane of shooting the ball is now. Um, I'm definitely much more out. happier with that table now. Like it, I put some. I tried to put my preconceptions aside with that table and actually put some time into playing this mm. particular table. And I will say it benefits greatly from VR. Yeah, like it really starts to make a lot of sense now. The the layers and the depths and everything are really useful. And I think that now I can actually see what's going on. I have a better idea of what I need to shoot for. And you're right, it is very much separated right down the middle yeah. with light and dark. But, you know, using the dark side and shooting it up to where the um the holocron mini play field is, like that is now a lot easier to understand. And I'd argue actually easy to shoot now as well, because you can see how things yes. need to go off the holocron to get up there. Um so that's easy to understand. The light side, though, that that holocron, that spinning holocron, drives me insane. It's so hard to line the shot up so you can knock the multi ball out of the holocron. Mm -hmm. Like there's a ball stuck in the holocron where you shoot it, it pops it out, and you start multi ball. That's so inconsistent for me. Maybe I just suck mm -hmm. and I can't do it, but it's just so frustrating. Um, that particular shot. To and then, like I mentioned, dialogue. Rogue One definitely benefited from three dimensions. Yep. Um, it looks really good. Looks in, really good. Uh, in three dimensions. Uh, yeah. Empire? <laughs> I have to laugh. They, on the back of the play field, there's a Death Star, right? Mm. They, they didn't bother, bother making... And, and it and it's, then goes deep, like mm. inside the back glass, you might say, to a star field. Yeah. But the Death Star is just a cardboard cutout. They didn't bother making it 3D. Making it 3D. Which is kind that of could like, have been a sacrifice. It um, could have been. Could... Um, but it's also a table that I don't think the 3D helps or hurts. It is just as easily playable in 2D as not. Um, yeah. I think Jedi uh, benefits a little bit from it because the upper play mm. field can get a little bit confusing uh, yeah. in 2D. So I think that benefited a little bit. Um, yes. I think the New Hope, I went, I didn't know it had a lower play field. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> which was kind of a like huh okay um rebels i think uh it, it, again it looks it, good it looks good it doesn't doesn't it benefits a little but it was not detracted from in 2d either in, so, in flat screen yeah the one that yeah. i really want to see in 3d is uh might of the first order i believe Oh, the one where the flames come up and you got to shoot the thing. The that's the one that is on the deck of the uh, star destroyer, and it has the lower playfield on it. Oh yeah, and you got to like pass the balls over. Yeah, that one I yeah that one I really hope that they bring over because I like the table, yeah. but it is a visual confusing table because it's a hard one because they didn't do depth of <clears throat> field on the lower playfield. And yeah. so you think that oh flat. there's you go you think the ball's coming towards your flipper and then you flip and nothing happens and you realize oh yes. that's in the lower play field. That heaps of yeah. yeah. So that's totally. one that it's... I really hope they bring over. Um the other one I'd like to see as well is uh the Star Fighter Starfighter one. Assault. That, that one would look amazing real. also. It would like imagine because it almost it always looks really good in flat screen now yeah. like that sort of like yeah. the fact that the table is like floating and there's all this stuff happening around it. Imagine that expanded. Well, um, imagine this. That's one that has a mini game that is basically you playing asteroids or not asteroids, yeah. you playing Galaga. Mm. So I've got to that yet. I don't think. Oh, it's but, great. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've I've got, got three ships. It. You've got three ships, and depending on if you're what you're doing, you either have Tie Fighters flying around and you're trying to blast them, and they're swirling oh, yeah. and stuff doing the Galaga action, or you've yeah. got meteors falling and you're trying to shoot the meteors and and dodge right. them. Imagine that as a virtual reality minigame. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. amazing. That'd be fantastic. So, uh, I think there's a couple of tables that I would really love to see uh, mm. come over, and I hope there's, that they there's are. There's plenty more that they could bring in. Like, I think there's nothing stopping them bringing in every single one no. into the collection over time. But there are some ones they could bring in as a priority, like a uh, if you are having to rank the ones to to bring in, yeah, the ones that we we're talking about would be very very good additions up front, yeah, and then gradually bring the rest over that you know would look nice in VR, but wouldn't that that essentially don't have any graphical 
problems in them that would make them so much more understandable in VR. Honestly, my preference would be for those two and uh, Boba Fett. Yeah, Boba Fett is one that's fun to play once you get into it, but it's again, it needs depth, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it it does. It really yeah. does. So that would, so that would be, be my one. top three that I would love to see come over first. Um, I really enjoy uh, uh, Force Awakens, the table, but I mm. don't feel that it suffers in 2D at all. So I'm no. fine with waiting on that. Like I said, the, I'm more cons- I'm more wanting tables that will I think will visually benefit from the immersive uh, VR aspect of things. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think there's there's definitely lots of uh, room for some excellent content to be brought into that that product. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts that we have on on VR? I do, um, I, I do. Okay, I have a thought, and this mm. is again regarding the vitri- the vitriol of reviews out there. People. Oh, the hot just, garbage. The hot you said garbage. We get the hot reviews. garbage. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of that is everybody taking a chance. This is the first release that Zen has had since they've announced Pin Effects and yeah. it being Epic exclusive for a year. I think people are taking an opportunity to uh, heat piles <laughs> of mm. dung over at uh, Zen for this. Um, this is an Unreal based game. This is their first Unreal Engine based release. It's completely playable. And you know how I know that? So there's a guy on YouTube uh, by the name of Kerry Hardy. He does mm-hmm. a ton of real-world pinball content. Mm-hmm. Um, he's decisive on his own in the pinball community, apparently. Uh, some people love him, some people hate him. But he's in it big time. Um, not yeah. quite dead flip level, but close. Very close. Right. And Oculus called him up and said, hey, we want to sponsor your show. And he went, hey, why? <laughs> yeah, why would I want to do this? And yeah. so then they contacted him again, and he said, well, I guess if they're contacting me a second time, they've got a good reason. So, okay. So they sent him over a Quest 2 and made a whole Oculus care package, you know, shirt and mm. water bottle and all that jazz. Yeah. But it was Quest 2, and they sent him Star Wars Pinball VR. Yeah. And he basically said, I've never played VR. I've never played a digital pinball game, ever. Because I so only play fresh. fresh, brand new. Yep. He had a blast. He yeah. absolutely was shocked at how much fun he was having. One of the things yep. that he, again, looking at it from purely a physical pinball machine player, he was like, I love all the mechanics that are on these things because it would drive the price of a real machine through the roof. Absolutely, it would. Yeah. And he goes, but he was like, I love how it's modeled. It's very realistic. The sounds are there. He, he basically didn't, as a real-world pinball exclusive player, didn't feel like there was anything lacking. Um, and that's a big call. That's a big call. Mm. And what he was saying, he goes, I'm going to have to take, and he was talking about with portability with the Quest 2. He was like, I'm glad it's portable the way it is because he goes... I know that if I invite friends over that are just like me, they ain't going to play this thing. Because, But if I take it over to them and be like, throw this on, give it a shot, that mm. they're going to come to the same conclusion that he has. And because he's like, I've found myself, and he does his show with a row of pinball machines behind him. And he goes, mm. I keep on just in this past week, just grabbing the headset and throwing it on and playing. So... Right. With a big row of pinball machines behind him, he's going like, I'm exactly. going VR. So, I mean, I That's think huge. for VR enthusiasts and people that are really, really, really into VR and how good the graphics can be in VR and what they expect, I understand there being a disappointment in this. Mm. But calling it an absolute piece of trash that's unplayable that's way out of line. Yes, that's there's rubbish. room for improvement. Absolutely room mm. for improvement. Um, but I, I I, truly believe that uh, the improvements will come. We just need to you know, keep our foot on the gas a little bit. But overall, it's a, it's a good product that does exactly what Lucasfilm would want it to do. Yeah, well, exactly right. Promote Star Wars in a positive light and, yeah. and make the thing... Uh, 
uh, like the whole Star Wars experience like a feature of the game, which is you can't argue that it doesn't do that. So, and again, look back at our our review of the other, you know, Zachary Pinball and Stern Pinball. Uh, they both had their issues too. Mm. That if you're willing to overlook them, then you can still have a good time playing the things. Um, mm. When it comes down to the core of playing a pinball machine in VR, they're all fun. Oh, yeah. It's they're all the gravy totally aspects that, that, you know, can bog down. You're like, well, it needs to fix this and it needs to fix that. Yeah. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I had to white screen wow. to death. Wow, I totally white screened to death. Yeah. That was That's interesting. Right, you're back again. All right. Back again. I think my computer's telling us it's uh, time for us to wrap it's this up. It's time to wrap here. it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. All right. Well, hey, look, folks, uh, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that in-depth dive. Um, get the game. Yeah, Go play some football. It. Yeah, just buy it. You're not going to you're not going to be regretting it terribly much or wait for a sale. I don't know when a sale will come, but mm. if you want to do that to, uh, you know, if you want if you feel like you need to give it a month for all the patches to be done and make the game playable and wonderful, you know, well, do wait, that. Wait, yeah. but it's it's definitely going to be something that is eventually going to be in your library if you are a VR owner. Yeah, that's, you'd be that's, mad not to. In other words, yeah. like even even now, you're going to get your value out of your thirty four bucks, and that's the Australian dollars. Um, yeah, twenty four you know. here. Yeah, so, so you're going to have fun with that, and like just for the mini games alone. And for the career progression stuff, that that's a really fun aspect of the game that you yep. really do need to experience because it's it's a lot of fun. So get it, get it. All right, uh, mm. let's wrap this thing up. All As right. usual, we don't know what we're going to talk about next time, but it'll be something. Typically, be Jared's favorite stuff and things. Stuff and things. There'll All be right. some. Mm. Until then, uh, hey, go visit the website blockadepinball.com and. Uh, yeah. Hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what your thoughts are. And uh, until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.